I've recently visited Ride Fox UK to find out all about coil shocks and more importantly if I could put some on my bike. That video by the way is in the link underneath this one if you want to check that out later. Today as you can see I'm here at Bike Park Wales and I'm going to be running both a full air sprung setup and also a full coil sprung setup to see exactly what works best on this bike. But more importantly for my own sake, which one am I going to prefer? <laughs> Okay, so let's be clear from the start. Today, it's a bit of a selfish endeavor. This is a social experiment, an emotional experiment from my point of view. I'm all about how the bike feels on the trail. I love being outdoors, I love riding trails. Now I'm well aware that some people out there will prefer coil, some will prefer air. I don't think there's one better than the other. They're down for different style people. And as I've said before, I'm a huge air suspension fan. Today we're gonna to find out though, if coil can actually convince me otherwise. But let's start off with what I love best, one of my favorite trails. Gotta say, coil ain't gonna be air. The way I like to duck and dive through stuff, like, all right, so you've got multiple lines over his roots, I know it's high size, but I kind of like to switch around between them. The bike just feels good, it's solid, it's really progressive. I'm worried a little bit with coil that it's just not gonna have that same feel. That said, I might just wanna bulldozer it. We'll see, I guess. Well, what can I say really? Like this is one of the better trail bikes on the market and this is one of the best trails that I love to ride. Like it's pre pretty much a match made in heaven. 130 out back, 150 out front, nice and progressive. Honestly, I don't think that Coil will beat that on a trail like this. This feels amazing. Now, of course, the tune on this shock is designed for this bike. It's an air shock. It's got three position on the compression and this is where it really comes in. I've got it in the mid, not because I need to firm the shock out. But what it actually does is it just keeps the BB a little bit higher. It makes it really efficient. Now it doesn't matter how good you can pedal a coil shock, it's not going to go up as well as this. Climbing with an air shock definitely has an advantage. I'm able to use the compression lever in the mid setting. Now this isn't because I want to firm the suspension up, but it actually keeps the bike a little bit higher up in the travel. Now it's really noticeable here because it's keeping the cranks that bit higher off the ground. However, there is a slight downside because you lose a bit of traction and I am suffering a little bit of wheel spin. Supportive ride of air feels brilliant here. I really love how I can push it into the turns and the bike feels like it lurches forwards. It's dead easy to pick it up over the lumps and force into those backsides. There is less grip though. I can definitely feel the back end scratching around in some of the berms. Well, I've summarized so far by riding the trail I know really well. Really rooty, sort of twisty turny. You've got so much support with an air shock. Of course, the air shock was designed with this bike in mind. In fact, the bike was designed around air shocks. However, I do know that the bike can take a coil shot, but there's already a little alarm bell ringing for me. And that's the fact of where the bike sits in the travel. I can tailor where the bike sits by using a bit of low speed compression with that dial. 
on the core shock, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to generally sit lower. And I just worry, despite how nice it's going to feel, the bike might just feel a bit too planted, but uh, we'll work that out after we get to the rocks. Well, what can you say about that? It's called Rimdinger for a reason. That's a pretty rough trail by all accounts. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't really matter what bike you ride. I'm saying that on this bike with 130, 150 and air sprung at the moment, I didn't even use all my travel. And I've got to say, there's a few times there where I felt like I was close, but as I said to you at the beginning of the video, like I do like my bike to feel progressive. It kind of, it's got that feeling that I can really push into things and get like lurch forward, get speed out of it. And also to be fair, it gets me out of bother here and there because I've got a little bit more when I run out of talent, which is um, pretty often if you need to be honest. Feeling what this bike feels like now, I'll make a prediction about the coil. I reckon it's going to be way quieter through there. It's going to feel a lot more planted, but I think I'm going to lose the feeling that I like. I don't know if you noticed through there, a few times I was pushing into things to get over some of the bigger holes. I suspect I might not be riding the same way on coil. Now it's time for a car bike changeover. This means getting a bike in the work stand and trying to do a clean swap without contaminating bearings or losing any small parts. Yeah, all right, it's not ideal given the riding conditions, but it's a pretty speedy job and the bike's gonna get a load of loving later anyway. I've kept a base settings on my body weight for both setups here to try and keep things as fair as possible. Okay, well, we've changed over to the coil shark, got the coil fork on, uh, got a fresh jacket, changed the grip so they match, so you can see that on camera nice and easy. Uh, let's get cracking, I reckon. Now clearly this is something about coil versus air. Now I've been on the coils now for a little while um, and it's something actually that I didn't think I'd be feeling today is I've got a bit nostalgic and gone down memory lane. The first time I rode a proper set of coil forks, in fact the first time I rode a proper set of mountain bike suspension forks that genuinely worked was a pair of Marzocchi Z1 Bombers. The first ones, the orange ones with the dual disc mounts on them, twin core springs, open oil bath, the sort of fork that you still find in today that have never been serviced and that still work. Pretty amazing by all accounts and you know I'm, I was kind of almost starstruck by how good that fork was back in the day. I remember watching a friend riding down the road towards me and seeing it just moving around over the bumps in the ground and that is exactly how this feels now. It's taking me straight back although it's a very different fork granted but compared to what we had back then it's a it's much better fork it's much stiffer it's bigger it's more capable by all accounts but there's definitely something that I'd forgotten that coil does especially on the front end of the bike. Now I kind of rely on a progressive suspension fork for pushing into the ground and I kind of, I can feel my grip. I'm sure that some of you will know that feeling. There's something that you don't get with a coil fork. It's a bit more of a linear feel, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it kind of isolates you from that terrain. Now what I've just found coming through here, I want to push into things and I can't feel how much grip I've got. I mean, there is loads of grip, but I like to be able to feel that grip. Does that make sense? Some, something I'm feeling for this, but um, I'm still 50-50 on this. Let's carry on, I reckon. On flow trails like this, the coil feels great when pushing into turns, but because it sticks to the floor, pulling the bike up and over stuff is much harder work. The upside though, the grip in the turns is insane.
Okay, so I kind of touched on the fact already that the air bike feels very different, as in the air sprung bike, feels very different to climb than this. So, so the coil, undoubtedly, even with the climb switch on, it feels like it's got a lot more grip. And that makes sense because we know it's very sensitive at the beginning of the stroke. That feels great. But something that I've not heard people talk about is body weight with riders. So I'm about 90 kilos and it makes me feel like a heavier rider. The bike feels more lethargic. It takes a lot more time to move it around on the trail, more time when you're climbing as well to move around. The air bike feels more agile. And really that is because of the fact it's more progressive. Granted, you could tweak this. I'm trying to run them as fairly as possible. Um, you could run more compression on there, more low speed compression to help resist that movement. But uh, then you end up sacrificing the ride quality that you get from the coil. It does feel amazing. However, the climbing, it does feel like a bit of a pig, even though it's not moving around much to my movement. It's just that continuously plush feel that you have. Good thing and a bad thing, because of the fact you chuck it down the rough stuff, it just feels amazing. A um, little bit of turmoil, I've got to say, between the two. Okay, scratch what I said earlier about not being really sure how I felt about this. I know exactly how I feel about it now. I've just been doing some laps of Rimdinger. Uh, that's a red rated trail, so it's not too severe, but it's mega rocky as the name it suggests. It's basically a giant rock garden the whole way down. It's pretty rough on your bike, it's pretty rough on your hands. I've got to say, if you want to charge that stuff all day long, coil all the way. It feels amazing through there. All right, granted, my riding style doesn't lend itself that well to coil, I've got to say. So uh, this is something I'd, I've identified and also Jack behind the camera has noticed as well. I kind of seem to like dance and sort of move around on the trail quite a lot. Um, I guess that's come from being in riding for so long that I've been used to preserving bikes rather than just having a bike, you can just plow through stuff. Coil stuff really does let you just plow through anything as you want. Um, I've got to say, it feels amazing. It's so encouraging. If I was to keep a coil fork on the front of the bike, particularly on the front here, I mean, I was going into stuff so much harder than I think I usually would and feeling so much less through the bars, almost numbed to the terrain. It probably wouldn't end up too well for me. I think air suspension on the front actually keeps me in check, enables me to feel that terrain. The damping is so good on the Fox 36 that I don't need to worry too much about that side of things. And for that reason, I think air is the one for me on the front, but, um, as you can see out back, I've got a bit of unfinished business here. Like I've told you time and time again, I'm air through and through, but if I could get that shock to stand up a little bit more in climbing and feel a little bit more punchy through the stuff I like to push in, well, I could well be a coil fan again. We'll have to see, I guess. Thanks for hanging around and uh, keep tuned on this one because there might be some more stuff coming up. I'm off for another lap. See you later.